Hello everyone, my name is Kitty and happy October. I'm here today to hopefully share with you how I made the blingy Furby necklace from the movie Uncut Gems. And I am so excited to start on this project, so let's just dive in. I'm going to chat quickly about the materials I've chosen and sort of this beginning point that I'm at. So right off the bat, you can tell I have chosen Smooth On products. Why? I love Smooth On and I have had a lot of success with them with other projects. Um, I am using the Mold Star 15. I believe it has a pot life of 50 minutes and a cure time of four hours. And I am using the Smooth Cast 327. I believe it has a pot life of 20 minutes and a cure time of four hours as well. Both of these are a bit slower. Why? I am slow. We will be compatible. We will have lots of working time. I think that is so great. I have also gotten the Cast Magic um, by Smooth On and the color is Gold Brush. It's just basically some gold flakes that I'm going to be adding to my Smooth Cast to color it to make it look gold. And I will be using, it's this guy, it is a vintage McDonald's toy, a little Furby, and it looks to me exactly like the one in the movie. Of course, I will be sacrificing my green one. Oh, sad. So what I've done to get going is I have gotten some scotch tape and cut little pieces off and I've been wrapping it around his furry little tuft of hair, um, perhaps in vain to protect it, but um, you never know. And the next point I'm going to be doing is plugging in my hot glue gun and filling in all the little crevices of the Furby with hot glue. That way none of the silicone from the mold will seep in and ruin the mold or ruin the Furby. The next thing I'm doing is building my mold box. I have put my Furby in the middle, uh, figured out his body shape, figured out um, a size for my mold, and gotten my walls ready as well. So I'll be plugging in the hot glue gun and gluing down the mold box. And once the Furby and the mold box is ready, I can mix up some Mold Star and pour it in here. So let's get going. So as previously mentioned, the first thing I'm going to do is prepare my toy Furby for the mold. I'm just using the hot glue gun to fill in any cracks and then I'm just using the hot tip of the hot glue gun and my fingernail to just sort of lightly sculpt any little hot glue bits. As you can see, I have also covered his tuft of hair with scotch tape and then used hot glue to sculpt sort of a loop shape so that I can add a chain later. After I have settled on the dimensions for my mold box, I cover it with packing tape and then hot glue all of the edges together. I add additional tape and hot glue to reinforce it as needed. Once my mold box is ready, I add hot glue to the bottom of my Furby and glue it, secure it to the bottom of my mold box. I also have ready lots of plastic cups and plastic knives for mixing my materials. Next, I put a little man ease release in a plastic cup and using a cheap paintbrush, I lightly coat the entire plastic Furby with the ease release. This will make it a lot easier to remove it from the mold later. After allowing time for my ease release to dry, I can now mix and add my mold star. Please be sure to read the instructions thoroughly and follow them for any smooth on products. I, of course, am being a little naughty and I'm sort of eyeball measuring my part A and part B for my mold star, but this seems to work for me quite well. So I add a little part A, halfway filling the cup, and then add a little part B and mix them together very thoroughly. And then I just dump them into my mold, being careful not to pour it directly on the Furby. And I just mix several cups of mold star 
until I've completely covered my Furby with plenty of room over the top edge just to make sure I have a nice structurally sound mold. And again, when I'm pouring that mold star into the mold box, I want to pour very carefully and slowly so that air bubbles can escape. After my mold has had ample time to cure, I am finally able to cut off the cardboard and extract my Furby from the mold and just check out the mold. This part can be a little tricky and you need to work very, very carefully and slowly. Um, as I cut the mold to get the Furby out, I try to use a zigzag cut pattern. That way the edges of the mold can fit back together like a puzzle piece. Um, of course you may need a friend to help you. My mold was very strong and a little tricky to work with. But again, just taking time and having a little help and trying to cut sort of in a zigzag back and forth shape, I was finally able to release that Furby from the mold. So my mold is looking very good and I was able to cut the scotch tape off and pick some of the hot glue off and save my green Furby. And now I can start mixing and pouring resin into my mold. So to prepare my mold for resin pours, I start by taping and rubber banding it shut and putting it on some cardboard just in case there's any spills. And on the inside of the mold, I coat it with ease release and let that dry completely. Then I move on to mixing my resin together, 50% part A and 50% part B. And I mix in my gold brush filling or flakes into I believe part B first and then add part A. Again, I just eyeball measure it. But please make sure to read the instructions when doing your own resin pours. And here you can see the chemical reaction happening. It's starting to heat up. I try to pop any bubbles that come to the surface and give it lots of time to cure completely. Then I remove it from the mold and cut off any flashing that may have occurred on the bottom edges. And now I can start bedazzling it. Um, this part is very tedious and it takes a long time. I was just using some glue and tweezers and just placing these tiny little crystals on it the silver crystals for the tummy, and then the pink, blue, or silver crystals for the body. Again, I just had to keep at this to completely cover the Furbies. So with my first Furby finished, I decided that I was going to add a little more gold flakes to my next pour, and I went ahead and made the pink and blue Furbies next.
And now using acrylic paint, I'm going to start adding the details to the eyes. Just very carefully painting them in. Okay, so I thought I would give a quick status update. It is officially May and I have abandoned this project for about eight months now, which is very on brand for me. Um, I believe where I left off was I had just finished bedazzling the three of them, the pink, the blue, and the silver, and I had painted the first layer of white for the eyes. And honestly, I think I got a hand cramp, shelved it, and then just moved on. Um, but I was actually going through my computer. I was looking at some old footage I had recorded and decided that I wanted to finish this project up. So the strategy I'm thinking is I'm going to finish painting the eyes with acrylic paint and I have some varnish on hand and I'm just going to varnish the eyes to finish them off. And I'm going to look around, see if I can find a chain so that I can make these into a pendant. Um, and I'm going to have to use things that I have on hand since all of these shops are still closed here. But otherwise, let's just jump back into it. So I bust open the acrylics again and decide that I'm going to give the eyes a second coat of white before moving on to the other details. After my second coat of white paint has completely dried, I paint on brown circles for the iris of the eye and I sort of reference the toy Furby I have on hand and pictures of the bedazzled Furby from the Uncut Gems movie. And finally, I paint on the black dots for the pupil, and then very carefully, I take a needle and just dip it in paint and lightly touch up any little points or corners that need it. Once the acrylic has dried, I give it a quick very devil may care spritz with the varnish and I'm actually not sure if it did anything to help it maybe it helped prepare the eyes for this little last coating of resin that I ended up giving it so yeah I let the varnish dry and then I decided that it didn't really add anything so I decided that I was going to very carefully mix up the tiniest little amount of resin and using a Q-tip, apply a very thin layer to the eyes. But I wanted to be careful that way it wouldn't become cloudy or white or splotchy. So this part was super tedious and again, I just had to be very careful and apply only the thinnest layer. Once that last layer of resin had completely dried and cured, they were complete, so let's take a look.
And thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and would like to see other fun DIY videos, please like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.